Good morning, everybody. Welcome to New Life's fantastic scene. Special welcome if you're with us for the first time. Um, we just love to, to be together and to worship, so you're very, very welcome. Now, before we get into it, we've got a few notices, so we're just going to kind of crack on with those, and then we're going to make start. So, Rachel. Thank you. So, next week, we have picked in the park. Uh, many thanks to everyone who's uh, said so they're going to help us with the barbecue. We could still help do a bit more help. So, if you can help, please speak to me today or email me this week, and that'd be great. So, next week, there won't be a service here. The service will be at 10 o'clock at the bandstand in the park. And if I remember correctly, that was in front of the toilets. Yeah. So, if you don't know where, they, where, where we're going, follow the signs for the toilets, and it's right in front. And then followed by barbecue after the service. So it'd be really good to have as many people as you like to come. Come and talk to people. It's a really good evangelism opportunity as well. All welcome. And it's usually a really, really good time. Uh, if you've got any questions, you can speak to me today. Uh, Monday in contact is as normal this week. And Max asked me to remind people that on Thursday at 7.15am, we have a revival prayer on Zoom. So if you'd like to join that, the link will be in the weekly update. And it'd be really good to pray together really early in the morning. And uh, the final one is Alvanto. Um, so there's been a few problems with Alvanto recently. If you've been having problems logging in, please let me know. If you don't get a weekly update from me, please let me know as well. I'd we'll like you to the database. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. All right, as I was just preparing for this morning and, and just kind of playing around, what I thought God wanted to say, I just really felt that there's an invitation this morning. There is an invitation to come into His presence. John 7, 37 says, On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, Let anyone, anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Anybody thirsty this yeah. morning? Yeah. I know I'm certainly thirsty. So there is an invitation, whether this is your thousandth time sitting in a church seat, or whether this is the first time that you've ever come across the threshold of a church, there is an invitation to come into the presence of God. He has life, each and every one of us, and he wants that life to flow into us and then out of us. So why don't we stand, we're going to pray, and then we're going to worship. Father, we just thank you that you have an invitation for each and every one of us this morning to come into your presence, to have life, your life flowing into us and out of us. Lord, I pray for an encounter for each and every one of us this morning, that you would just come and you would presence yourself here, that we would we would have a, a new, a fresh encounter with you, and that your invitation, we would accept your invitation. But Lord, right now, we would make that decision just to step into your presence. Let anyone who is thirsty come. So we come to you this morning, the giver of life, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Matt. As you might have noticed, we're a bit short today. So we're going to have to Bass players at Accrington uh, and mics at Wolves End. So we need you to sing five times as loud as you normally do. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah you need a good hand. Thank you, man. <laughs> Everybody else okay with that as well? I uh, can't hear you. <laughs> Don't you get shy on me, pick up your soul 
Oh 
Yeah.
Let's enjoy the blessing of this house. Let's give it a good job. And it's been a real blessing for us over the years as well. So yes. just, it's difficult to an exaggeration of times. It's a good man. I'm going to pray for John, and I'm going to look forward to what God's going to say for you. Father, thank you for the blessing that John is to, to us individually and to this house as a, as, a, as a place, Father. And Lord, we just pray that we would hear what you've got to say from, through him this morning. And we just pray, pray that it's uh, an enormous blessing on him this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks, John. Amen. Thank you, <clears throat> Praise God. Hey, well, it's good to see you all this morning. My name, if you don't know who I am, I'm John McCain. I'm one of the pastors here. Retired, but um, <laughs> retired when I was 60, and then um, went to the Hillsong Church for two years. And then I was preaching here one Sunday morning as an invited um, speaker. And this look, they look such a pretty full lot. <laughs> Didn't have a pastor. And uh, Mike, Mike wasn't the pastor then, and uh, he was on holiday. And uh, I said, I'll stay with you until you get somebody. That was 16 years ago, and I'm still here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's a great privilege to, to be here. Uh, if you're here for the first time, give you a very warm welcome. How many are here for the very first time? Just give your hand up. Shake hands with the person next to you and say, I really think you're good looking. <laughs> Don't tell us. Just give them a Received abides in you. 
God wants to anoint us with holy oil this morning. Not physical holy oil from the bottle, although the Bible does say if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church, anoint him with oil, with oil from the bottle, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and God will raise them up. But there's an anointing this morning that God wants us all to have, and that's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is God the Holy Spirit. I think that the Greek word is um, the paracl parakletos, the paraclete, the one sent alongside to help, the Spirit of God. And we can have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said when he left the earth, he said, I will send the Holy Spirit, I will send the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who will abide with you forever. Amen. And we thank God this morning for God, the Holy Spirit. We can have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. He talks with us, He walks with us, He speaks to our hearts. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. It's a funny saying, isn't it? Dead flies cause the ointment of the apocryphy. So I think an apothecary, the perfumer, to stink. And a funny saying that, isn't it? There's other sayings as well that we read about that we often say. It was a straw that broke the camel's back. Have you ever said that? Yeah. He has the right end of the stick. Don't cry over spilled, spilled milk. A half a loaf is better than none. And you know some of the world's most famous sayings are found in the Bible. Did you know the saying, saved by the skin of your teeth, is found in Job chapter 19, verse 20, 4,000 years ago. Can a leopard change its spots, or an Ethiopian, the colour of his skin, is found in the book of Jeremiah. So the expression here is the fly in the ointment, or she is the fly in the ointment, means something's gone wrong with that person, and that person is causing some kind of problem. That's what it literally means. These days there are beautiful smelling perfumes. They've opened a the shop in the Metro Centre, haven't they? Is it? That's what I forgot the name, but they're worth it, say. That's all they sell, perfume. And uh, these three house of phrase, I, I won't let you to have a look just to see what so what's going on in there and um, you've got all these free sprays and perfumes. I don't know if you're very wise, if, if, if you live in, in Newcastle, you can walk to Phoenix every day really and have a free spray, can't you then? <laughs> the most expensive aftershave and you say, can I have a little sprayer? Well, you've got it for the rest of the day. Well, if you do that for the rest of the year, you know, rest of the year, you've got a bottle of perfume for nothing, haven't you? I would never do that. Because I would feel embarrassed because you recognise, you see, that's our old man again, he's watching his spirit of aftershave. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank God for the healing balm of heaven, amen? amen? The healing that comes from Calvary's cross. Ephesians chapter 5, 2, it says, Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Is he a wonderful saviour this morning? Yes. Hallelujah! Yes. Do you know something, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, then you're missing out on, on the best thing that could ever happen to you. Right. Praise God. Jesus Christ our Lord, he's alive in heaven, he rose from the dead, yes. he's in glory, but he's alive and he said that two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst. He's here this morning. We cannot see him, but we can know his presence yeah. and his nearness. But he just doesn't want to be in the midst of us. He wants to be inside of us. Yeah. And if he isn't that yet, if you've never received him into your life as your Lord and Saviour, then do it today. He says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. Yeah. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. No dead flies of sin in his life. He was holy, undefiled, separate from sinners, and there was no sin found in him. He knew no sin, he did no sin, and he said to some of these people who would, would say bad things about him, 
can anybody, can anybody, can anybody here convince me, convict me of sin? There was an aroma of heaven about his life. Because he is the true light, he is the true bread that came down from heaven, and he is the living water. Paul, amen. I can't say enough good about him this morning. Words can't describe him. He's a wonderful saviour. Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Say amen. Yes. He's a wonderful saviour. And I love him this morning with all of my heart. Where would I be this morning without him? Where would I be? Where would you be without him this morning, Christian, brother and sister, if it wasn't for the grace of God and the transforming power of the Holy Spirit? Yes. And the forgiveness of God and the mercy of God, I would have been cast off long ago. But Jesus is alive. Amen. And he loves us. And he cares for us. He's described as God's unspeakable gift. Even Charles Wesley, the, the Methodist, the br brother of John Wesley, the famous preacher, he wrote to him, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's grace. One to, we, when we get to heaven, we, we need more than a thousand tongues when we see Jesus. Jesus Christ, our Lord, produces the impartation of life to all, all, all those who trust him. His holy life and his spotless death satisfies a holy God who demands holiness and righteousness from us poor sinners who are without strength and unable to save ourselves. Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, did that for us. 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross, he died for you and he died for me. There was none of their good enough to pay the price for sin. Only he could have knocked the gates of heaven and let us in. Jesus Christ died for you on the cross. And he wants to come into your life because he loves you. A lot of people make excuses for themselves and say, well, I am what I am, I do what I do because, because I can't help it. I'm addicted to something. In fact, the Bible goes further than that. It says, for the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The only problem is, you know, friends, a lot of people say, well, I'm as good as some Christians that I know. I know so I'm not a Christian yet, you might say, but I'm a, I'm a better person than some Christians I know. Or I go to church, or I read the Bible, or I say my prayers. Isn't that good enough to get to heaven? No, it's not good enough to get to heaven. I live a good life. I don't do anything wrong. I don't steal. I don't rob. I, I, I'm not a bad person. There's only one thing wrong with that kind of philosophy, friends. It's been, the, the, the only thing wrong is that we're sinners. That's right. And it's sin that separates us from God. And that's why Jesus died on the cross. That he might bring us to God. He died, he died on the cross that he might satisfy the righteousness of a holy God, God who hates sin. And this morning, if you feel, well, I need what you're talking about, I need Jesus in my life. Well, that's absolutely true, because you do, because we all do. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you on the cross. The parable of the lost sheep. If you, if he, he said it was only if, if the 99 were in the sheepfold and there was one lost one, would not the, the, the shepherd go looking for that lost sheep? And that's, that's true. And Jesus said that parable because there are a lot of lost sheep and a lot of lost people who need Christ. I remember the day when I became a Christian. I was 15. I was just a little lad. But I knew what sin was. I knew what I would swear for the fun of it. To shock people. Ah, I don't remember going to what things I did that wouldn't be edifying to anybody. Now, I don't believe any glory to Satan. But I want to tell you something when Jesus came into my life, what a difference he made. Yes, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, Jesus. That was 62 years ago. And I've never regretted one minute of it. Do you know the best times of my life are when I'm walking with him? Yes, thank you, Lord. When I'm loving him. And I'm singing the little songs to him. 
Tell me when I tell my love and man, and I feel his presence and his nearness. That's the most exciting, most lovely times of my life. I love my family, I love my son and my daughter, and, and, and my son-in-law and my daughter-in-law, and I love my grandchildren. But I love Jesus more than anybody yes. else in this world. Yes. Hallelujah. The holy anointing oil. I better get to this subject now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the holy anointing oil in the Old Testament gave off a beautiful smell. The high priest would be anointed with perfumed oil to administer his duties as the priest of the Lord. In Psalm 133, we read about, uh, about the anointing of the tabernacle, the church in the wilderness, the high priest, his duties. It was used for the sanctification of the tabernacle, its holy vessels, and its priesthood. Our high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, is anointed to serve the heavenly tabernacle. He's in heaven. He offered himself to God as a sacrifice for our sins. In the Old Testament, they would offer the, 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 the sacrifice of animals to put away their sins. But the Bible says that Jesus Christ became our sacrifice on the cross. Yes. And he offered himself as a sacrifice to God. And after, three days later, he ascended into heaven. He went, he, he, he came back to life. And then after that, he ascended into heaven. And he's there now, right now. And he loves you. And he loves me. Hallelujah. But he offered his own blood as a sacrifice. And he prays for the believer. The Bible says he ever lives to make intercession. He claims me as his own. His precious blood to plead. And the Father hears him pray. David was anointed by Samuel as king of Israel when he was a little lad of 16. The prophet went into the house of, of his father, Jesse, and all the sons, his sons, stood before the prophet of God. God said, I want you to anoint one of Jesse's sons as king of Israel. And Eliab stood there, great soldier, and mighty man. And God said, it's not him. Abinadab and Shammah and all the brothers stood before the prophet. And God said, it's none of them. And Samuel said to Jesse, have you got another son? He says, yes. It wasn't of any consequence. He was watching a few sheep. And the, and the prophet said, send for him. And young David stood before the prophet. And God said, anoint him. He's the one. And he anointed him with oil. And he waited probably 15, 16 years or more before he became king. But he was anointed by the prophet. Jesus was anointed with ointment in John chapter 12, with spike guard, a very precious ointment by a woman who was a sinner. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. We see Christians down through history who exuded the life and character of Jesus Christ. There are men and women who have gone on who exuded the presence of God in their life. And friends, God wants that to happen to us as well. People who carried the aroma of heaven, the aroma of God. But you know, friends, we often see the beauty of Christ and the character of others. People who really do care and make a difference. People who walk with God. There are people here who are like that. And you know it, for they produce a heavenly perfume that I've been talking about this morning. They exude something of the presence of God, the anointing of God. The anointing of God isn't just speaking in tongues or prophesying. The anointing of God is sometimes to say sorry. 
I've messed up. I've made a mistake. I'm the chief of sinners. God changes our lives from the inside out and makes us into different people. So if we can call ourselves Christians and we have this new nature within, within us, Christ lives within us and it often shows through. We see Jesus, I see Jesus in people. Christians that I know, they're some of my favourite people, some of my favourite, some of them some have gone on to heaven. Lovely people of God, godly people, people of Christ. The fruit of the Holy Spirit was in them. And the fruit of the Holy Spirit God wants in every one of our lives, that sweet smelling savour of Jesus Christ. And that's what the Bible talks about, that we should be sweet smelling, there should be something about us that reminds people of Jesus. I wish this morning this was the case for all believers. Sometimes in the lives of God's people things go wrong and the anointing of Christ within us can be marred from our lives and there's a stench rather than a lovely smell. Little dead flies can get into our lives and give the perfume a bad smell and aroma of Christ. In Philippi we read about two women who didn't speak to each other, they fell out with each other. Eudia and Sintichi, that was their names. And Paul addressed them right, in, right in to, to the church in Philippi, the Philippians. He said they taught those two women to, to, to put their differences right. There are people who create a stink in the church instead of being the answer to the problem, they become the problem. And I'm sure we all want to become better Christians. We all want to be more like Jesus in our daily living. I do. But there are lots of flaws in my life. There are lots of things I struggle with. And there are lots of things I, 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 I have to say to God, I don't know why you bother with me. Death flies get in sometimes and they create a bad order. It's not the big gross sins that we have trouble with, but the little sins that we tolerate. I think with Smith Wigglesworth, the, um, the, the healing evangelist, he, he tells a little story of, uh, of a woman who had a dog, a little yappy dog. And she was waiting at the bus stop and she was telling the dog to go home, I don't go home. And the dog was yap, 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 and, and she was wanting to get her on the bus. And then the finish she turned and she smiled at the dog and said, get lost! And the dog ran for its life. But sometimes we tolerate little yappy dogs. Instead of getting the victory in Jesus, we tolerate things in our lives. We know they're not right, but we put up with them. And Psalm 133, the King James Version says, How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It's like precious oil poured on the head, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It's like the Jew of Hermon falling from Zion, on Mount Zion. For the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. For those who live in unity with each other. If a little fly of division can enter a church <coughs> fellowship, Satan is happy. The Corinthian church, the Galatian church, and a whole few churches like that, where they seem to lose the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They lose the sense of the presence of God. Has a little fly flown into your life recently? Little flies are small, but they have great potential to ruin something valuable. To rend, in this case, perfume. To render something that is essential as useless. To use something to corrupt, something used for healing into something that's putrefying. We can say to ourselves, it's still just a little sin. Keep short accounts with God. Sin brings a noisy clatter where there was once a symphony. Sin replaces the bread of life with morning breadcrumbs. Sin replaces springs of living water with stagnant pools. And sin replaces the fruit of the Holy Spirit with worm riddled fruit of the flesh. Each start small, but the consequences are great. One untuned trumpet in the orchestra, 
One small board on the bread, one rotten apple in the fruit bowl, one bite of the forbidden fruits in the garden of Eden. A little fly got in there, didn't it? Our first parents became sinners, and sinners passed upon all men because all have sinned. It was the golden calf that doomed the Israelites for 40 years. It was one man's sin that led Joshua's defeat in the battle of Ai, Achan's sin. That stuff buried them in his tent, Babylonian garments. And God said, get rid of the lot, he didn't, he kept them back. It was one moment of anger that prevented Moses going into the promised land. It was one kiss that betrayed Jesus. It's the little foxes of doubt, the little flies of selfishness, the little flies of pride, anger, gossip, resentment, and unforgiven spirit. We can tolerate these things in our lives, and we wonder why we are not in the place where God wants us to be. We sometimes don't just tolerate them, we nurse them, we feed them. These are the little flies that spoil our lives, a little folly outweighs wisdom. It's the little foxes that spoil the vines. It's a little leaven from the little yeast get into the, the door, goes right through it. Little leaven. Some folks never seem to have worked to sit down anybody, do they? On Samuel 25, every good neighbour and his wife Abigail. She was a godly woman, and her husband was a churlish man, and had spoiled her marriage, and eventually cost him his life. Some people have left churches and have had sad things <coughs> to say about, about other people, and they spread their churlishness to others whom they meet. If anybody says anything bad about anybody, say, hey, I don't want to listen to that stuff. As a pastor, a church pastor over many years, I've heard lots of stuff about people. And people have poured and complained about, about, about others. And um, but what does the Bible say? If you have a fault against your brother, what do you do? Do you go clamoring around? No. It says, go to your brother. Jesus said, go to your brother. Go, go and get yourself right with your brother. Have it out with him. Years ago, I was um, a pastor, and there was a group of elders, and there was one elder in particular that didn't like me at all. And I knew it. I knew it. And I said to the senior pastor, I said, Listen, I don't want to attend any of those elders' meetings anymore. I've had enough. I was full time in the church. He said, No, he said, You've got to be there. And I had to be there. So one day, they were all sitting on the platform, the elders, and this guy who didn't like me, and I knew it, I said to him, I'm not mentioning his name, I said, hey dear brother, I said, uh, have you got anything against me? You don't, you, you, you seem to be negative. Oh no, no, he says, you're okay, that's fine, that's fine. And he made all these excuses. But you know something, there was a change. He was nasty anymore. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. It wasn't that I was offending him at all. It's just it was just something that wasn't quite right. So I, I tried to get it put right with him. And is that the best thing to do? Yes. Hallelujah. You don't know what I'm talking about, so it doesn't matter what kind of blabbing about somebody that, that you know about, you don't even know who he is. Unfortunately, he backslid and left his wife and family and there's big problems in the marriage. Funnily enough, at that time, I was getting up every morning at six o'clock and praying for an hour. And I just wanted more of God and the more I wanted of God, I found out there was problems. With other Christians, do you ever feel like that sometimes? Yes. Shouldn't be, should it? One rejoices, we should all rejoice. 
If somebody is holy and godly and tries to do their best for God, we should encourage him. If someone's struggling with a problem, we should, we should encourage him to get up and go on. Because God loves us, isn't that right? Yes. He loves us. Yes. We should be encouragers, not discouragers. You should have got your shopping in, you're all right. Hallelujah. God is good. And His mercies endure forever. We need to trust the Lord, friends, with all of our hearts. And give our lives to Him. And if you've never done that this morning, then why don't you make that decision to follow Jesus? The seven churches of Revelation, the church in Corinth, there was division, party spirit, plenty of dead flies in that fellowship, roots of bitterness were springing up, and many were defiled. If a brother offends you, go to your brother, don't spread your grievances around. Saul, David, Solomon, little folly became major sin. How many of us could be more effective for God, but our lives are being marred by dead flies? Something's gone into our lives that shouldn't be there. We can't do much about it. And dear brother, sister, today, if you're struggling with something, if you've got some kind of addiction, if you've got some kind of something in your life that's keeping you down, I would never point a finger of accusation against you, not one bit. But I would pray for you that God would bless you and help you to come through into a large place for themselves, that you might have the victory over the things that are distressing you and holding you back. Amen. Amen. Is that the grace of God? Yes. Is that the mercy of God? Yes. Hallelujah. Does God love us? Yes. yes. Does God hold things against us? No. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we call Him, we make Him a liar. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Isn't God good? Yes. We don't deserve it, we never shall be. Never will deserve God's grace, but He loves us and He cares for us. We don't deserve it, but because of what He did on the cross 2,000 years ago, the righteousness of God was appeased in Christ Jesus. Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He made it white as snow. Friends, if you've ever received Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, then do it today. Don't keep him out. Let him come in. Maybe you made, you put your hand on him, you made a commitment, but nothing's happened in your life. Nothing's really happened. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things pass away, and behold, all things become new. But we've got to work at it as well. We've got to work at it. What can wash away my stain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. It still it flows as free as ever from my Saviour's wounded side. He died for you. He died for you. He wants to come into your life. He wants to save your soul. He wants to change you. He wants to make you a new person in Christ Jesus. It's not something you can do by yourself. It's impossible to live the Christian life without the Spirit of God being inside of us. Without Christ inside of us. We'll never be able to live the Christian life. You need Jesus. Why don't you receive him today as your Lord and Savior? Hallelujah. He's a wonderful Savior. And I'm glad I'm saved. <laughs> but if you have this faith, glory to God. Amen. Well, I think I've got another 10 pages of notes. You see, you better not have. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I've got on page 6, I must close now. 
I don't want you to think about the dead flies in somebody else's life. Ask God as be Lord. I could talk about addictions and faults that are coming to us all, but I believe that to the Holy Spirit. David cries in one of the Psalms, 139, 23, 24, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, O Lord, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me. The good thing about God's faith in Jesus is that he loves us and wants to remove the dead flies out of our lives. Amen? Amen. He gives us wisdom and strength to watch our hearts that they will not enter again. And even if they do, if we fall a million times, get up a million times. Amen? Amen. Get up and go on. As a young lad, I was a chef. I trained to be a chef. I worked with John Lewis, for John Lewis, Bain Bridges. And at my lunchtime, I was in Newcastle. I went, you can tell him, it's all you can't hear. It's about how, try, how hard I try and speak correctly. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and um, let's turn our brother to St. John's Church on Granger Street. The doors were open, nobody was in there. I just spent a little time in prayer after my lunch. And um, I remember one day feeling lousy, right to failure. And I thought, dear me. I'm never, I'm never going to make it. That's 62 years ago, by the way. I'm never going to make it. And I was kneeling on the pew, just praying. And then God spoke to me. I started to speak in the language of the Spirit. It was beautiful. It wasn't the Jimmy River, I remember that. It was a language. It came from in here. And I started to speak in tongues. And this had an overwhelming sense the presence of God and the love of God. That God could do me. That God could do anything for me. And He did. Sing a little song in me, there's no secret what God can do. What He's done for others, He can do for you. With arms wide open, you pardon me. There's no secret. What God can do well, I'm finished. The sermon for today. I was going to talk about perception, the woman at the well. But I didn't, I spoke about the fly in the ointment. <laughs> Pray for me, I'm at the Chinese Christian Fellowship at 4 o'clock this afternoon, I'm preaching on the marriage of Cain and Galilee. So pray for me. If I'm not here on Sunday, it's not because I'm backsliding. <laughs> <laughs> I know you think that sometimes, <laughs> but it, I'm preaching to the churches on the Moors End next week and then somewhere else I'll probably be here sooner or later. But I, it's just, I preach. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's so important. The most important thing this morning is you get right with God. Yes. Amen. Get right with God. Jesus. Ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins, to come into your life. If you've never done it, do it this morning. Hallelujah. I've got a little booklet called Journey into Life, a little booklet that I'd like to give you free of charge. And um, it will help you to understand a little bit more about what the Christian really means. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for the service today. I thank you for your presence and I thank you for your nearness. I thank you for all your goodness, Lord. Oh God, you're so good. I pray today, Lord, that people in this room will respond to the invitation of Christ. Come unto me, all you who labour on the heavy laden, and I will give you rest. As many as received him, to them give you power to become the sons of God, even to those who believe on his name. Receive Jesus right now, dear friend. If you would like Jesus to come into your life, you say a little prayer in your heart to God. I'll form the words, but you make it your prayer. And from the bottom of your heart, ask Jesus to come into your life. 
God's been speaking to you all already long before you came here this morning. God's been speaking to you. Receive him now as your Lord and Savior. Say this little prayer, Lord Jesus. I come to you. And I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you died on the cross for me. And Lord, I pray you'll forgive me for all my sins, the sins I've done. And I pray, Lord, you'll wash my sins away and come into my life right now and become Lord of my life. Lord Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and Saviour. Help me to follow you from this moment on and for the rest of my life. Stay in prayer. If anyone said that little prayer, you said that prayer, you really meant it. You want Christ in your life. I'm just going to ask you to do a little thing. I'm not going to embarrass you in any way. Just slip your hand up and take it down and say, God bless you. Is everybody at all? You said that prayer. God bless you. God bless you. Take your hand. God bless you. Anyone, take your hands down. Anyone else who said that prayer. And today you, you've received Jesus into your life. Is there another one? There are people here who said that prayer. Stick your hand in the air and I'll say, God bless you. Make that public confession of Jesus Christ. You want to do it, don't you? God bless you. Take your hand down. God bless you, lady. Anyone else? You said that prayer. You want Jesus in your life. There's some more people here, you want to do that. You said the prayer. Lift your hand, put your hand up, make a confession of your faith in Jesus. I said that prayer, I want Jesus in my life, and I'm going to shame. God bless you, Mark. Take your hand up. Anyone else? Several people today have said that prayer. Anyone else? You said that prayer, you really meant it, and you're going to follow Jesus for the rest of your life. Put your hand in the air. God bless you. Take your hand down. Someone else? Several people have done that this morning. Hallelujah for the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God and the salvation to all those who believe. It isn't the eloquence of the preacher. It's the gospel that saves. It's receiving Jesus that saves our souls. That brings us into a relationship with God. Is there another one? Is there another one? I think five or six people have done that today. Anyone else? They're going to join them. Put your hand in the air. I said that prayer. I want Jesus in my life. Anyone else? You're yeah, desperate to do it. Put your hand in the air. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You take a seat, please. Sit down. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you today, Lord, for the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thank you for the saving grace of God. Thank you that you change lives. And you make us different. We give you praise and we give you glory. Thank you for those who made commitment to you this morning. Pray you bless every one of them. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. And you, Jim. Amen. 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 Thank you, God bless Uh, if you'd like to receive one of these little booklets, just I'll be here at the front. And if you didn't put your hand up, it doesn't matter. You said the prayer, it doesn't matter. Put your hand up, it's going to save you anyway. It's receiving Jesus. And if, you, if you've done that today, I'll be very happy to give one of these little booklets, help you out, and we'll pray with you, and um, we'll see you going on with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Fantastic job, thank you very much. You know, there was a response in that message for all of us, not just those who put their hands up. That's an amazing message. So, uh, if you want like, like John said, if uh, you made a decision, you want to talk about it, please come to the front and um, John, and I'm sure a few others will uh, would speak in, in chat to you as well. We want to just close the meeting there. Thank you very much. It's been an amazing morning. And um, there's coffee at the back. We have a camping night tomorrow night. Don't forget that um, the Zoom prayer, Thursday morning, quarter past seven. Really get involved in that. It's fantastic. And also, can we put the chairs to the sides? 
I'll help us with uh, Jelly Beans tomorrow morning. Have an amazing